Sure. Nick thinks that there's nothing to it at all. Does it just go back to district court, and then district court will do it right back, so it has nothing to do with it, and that'll be all there is to it. That's one thing wrong about taking calm out of there. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, but I think it'll still, uh, I, I think we've still got the votes on that. I'm not sure. It depends on how it develops. So that, that may hurt. Yeah. But we'll, we'll certainly lose a vote on that. The other side won't gain one. We'll lose a vote. Because Tom... On the other hand, if you didn't appoint Ramsey, uh, Tom will cool down on this thing. Uh, that I'm pretty confident of. think Tom kind of feels like we owe it to Ramsey. adverse comment. I think that you ought to answer that this way. That uh, um, you've known it about him a long time. Because I honestly believe it's true. I believe he's a pretty selfless fellow. to be assistant secretary of state yeah. under under Rusk and Rusk asked Kennedy to make him assistant secretary of state. They didn't do it and they put him over there just drafting opinions. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he he that that's not what he'd like to do. That's not the movie he'd go to if he had his choice. But he uh, did it and did it well, and he harassed around with our executive order on equal employment and all of the mean little dirty things that you and have had to deal with all the years you've known me. And if you remember, he went back over it, and he was very quiet and easy and sold it to everybody and got him to accept it. And he did that job long until it was a white quit. And they brought him up and put him in that job. And that's about as mean a job as you can have with all the patronage and all the problems. And he did that one. Then when Bobby left, he came in, uh, in to me and I asked him if he'd like to have the circuit court here. Or if he was interested in a court appointment. I thought he might make a good man for Supreme Court. Then he begged him. And he said, well, it's a great honor. And I would enjoy doing it, but said it's not really my first uh, uh, choice. Uh, said uh, I'm a teacher. I want to kind of get out of that. Get in. The reason I enjoy this is the activity of it, public service. I'm very interested in the international field, and I would like to be assistant secretary of state. But I said, well, would you be interested in taking the CIA? And he said, yes, I'd, I'd like to have it. I'd be very happy to. Said, matter of fact, Mr. President, I would be glad to take any job that you thought I could be useful in. 
Uh, I'm not interested in the money or the title. I said, I don't mean by that I have money because I don't have. I said, I don't need a lot and I get by all right with what I do. And we have enough. I, I would be glad to take any job. Well, now, I kept remembering that. That's the primary reason I made him attorney general. That just appealed to me so much as being such a good person. And you recommended him, so that's, that's it. Well, I must say that outside of these uh, two or three things he doesn't discuss, like the uh, uh, the person. Yes. Those things, I, I must say that his judgment's been good and his relationship with me's been good and uh, I've never seen any indication of sloppy work or uh, he lost his uh, civil rights bill, but I don't think anybody could say that after, after the... Uh, I think Stokely Carmichael killed that when he appeared on the scene. Yeah, I... I I think, though, that we're likely to get in serious trouble with this Department of Justice when they see him gone and they see a Texan in there. Yeah. I think that has great dangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder. I don't suppose we could get Coleman to take the number two spot over there. That or Solicitor General. Yeah, that, I, but that would be better than Solicitor General. Would it? For this purpose. I don't know whether he's uh, really in there with our judges and whether he'd play with us there. He's a Republican, you know. And, oh. and I imagine he'd want to be getting justice for the Republican. The way, well, what would have to do with the real-life functions if they can be enough? I don't know whether they cannot be. I don't know what the statutes would permit that. No, the deputy handles all the personnel. Is that that's my statute? I believe so. Well, that one would not do. But I thought just the fact he was brought in the department could kind of uh, be in the department would kind of cool him a little. I don't know anything that'll cool Carmichael. Because his whole future depends on him being way out on the edge. Oh, sure. No, I think that's just... That's just right to the finish there, because it's a power fight with one group and one group. There's, um... Uh, well, if, uh... I guess maybe I have speculation. Is there, uh... You know, this fellow's door. Yeah. How a good man. If this, uh, if this uh, Marshall thing wouldn't kind of rock the negros in this country and put them in a position where they wouldn't be too mean to me. The appointment of the cabinet, they never noticed it. We got two letters acknowledging it. Yeah. And uh, uh, hey, uh, one of the right. men came in and told me yesterday, said, that's the greatest weakness of your administration. I said, what? Said you've done too much. It was Peabody uh, running for Massachusetts, well, and I said, "What? What about it?" He said, "Well, I'm the best governor Massachusetts ever had." Said I came in, I cleaned up this state, I tried to stop this graft, I did so and so, and said I passed uh, 35 bills. I said I passed so many that the average bartender couldn't remember one. Said, you came in, you passed 100 bills. Said, I can remember them. Said, I can name you 15 educational ones. I've looked at the list. 
said, you got your heart education, vocational education, education for the deaf, elementary education, secondary education, higher education, loans for all elementary students, work projects for co high school students, loans for college students, and all these other things. Now, he says, I had a person can name a damn bill that you passed. Said you passed 100 the first year and 80 this year. And said, there's 180. And I said, if you give me three, I can get elected. And I said, well, why don't you take Medicare? I God, that's one that everybody ought to know we passed. And why don't you take education and health, just as one outfit, and say that I have passed 40 bills on education and health. Heart, stroke, cancer, uh, new hospitals, modernization, teachers training, <laughs> nurses training, professional service. So, and take these 40 and say he passed Medicare, 40 health and education bill, poverty bill, and uh, food for the world. Well, he said he could get it down to about two of them. He thought he'd take Medicare and something else. He says, it's just the fact you've got 200 just ruins you. And said, then besides, I think, God damn it, he could do it if he wants to, anything he wants to. No use having to pay extra nickel for bread. If he wanted to stop it, he could do it. He's able enough and he's slick enough. It's a hell of a note, too. And I noticed this New York Times said he's slick this morning. They are mean to me every day. He said, this was going to be announced anyway. And they knew all about it. They're the one the damn human knew about it. But me, what happened was this damn Gene Rostow, I could kill him. I got him in. I said, now, Gene, there's one thing I'm not going to have is any leaks. And I'm just not going to have these columnists writing about when I'm going to bomb Hanoi and Haiphong. Like they did George Ball leak that, you know. And I had to wait a week before I could go through with it. He's worse than Adelaide. He got it from Adelaide. He just couldn't keep anything. So he said, that's right. I said, now, don't you tell anyone but your brother and your wife. Because you've been off this. He said, all right, he wouldn't. He went out of the office, and he called George Ball. I thought, oh, God almighty, I hope it won't. So I called Walt, got him. I said, now, you tell Gene when he talks to George and everybody else, don't mention anything about this except to his wife and to the president that he has to get off the hook on of Yale. But don't let anybody else know it. So he called him and told him again, specifically not to mention it to George. He went down to see Rusk and accepted. Got off from Brewster. Brewster was real nice. I guess I ought to call him. Thank him. He let him off. And it was a great inconvenience. He's head of this college and he just fixed up his house going to a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. His wife had taken over and knew how to of her. Walt came in and I said, well, what's Gene done? Well, he said, he, by gosh, he called up George Ball and told him he'd accept it. Mm -hmm. And this was night before last, mm -hmm. uh, 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I haven't got a chance in the world <laughs> of announcing this because George Ball will announce it. George called himself a press conference at 3.30. I got one at 11. And I don't think he told a press conference, but I think he told him he was leaking, and I think he leaked it around who was going to do it. Because a week before he came in and told me he was going to send me a letter, and I said, I just thought, well, down home, we, we, we poison eggs once in a while to get these sheep killing dogs. And we put a little in the egg and lay it out where they can walk right into it. So. I told George, I said, well, I don't know what in the world I'll do, George, when you're gone. I guess I'll have to have Ellsworth Bunker come in here and help us. Mm -hmm. We already talked to Bunker, and he said he couldn't do it physically. He wasn't up to it. Mm -hmm. But we liked him, and he's a natural, you know. And so George said he would be good. He would be good. And I said, well, now, who do you think we ought to have in the second place? Uh, he said, well, he didn't know. And we talked around a little bit. And finally, I said, well, Dean wants Luke Battle. Well, he said, I think Luke Bat will be very fine. Well, I said, well, we just may have to do that. Now, don't say anything about it to anybody. He said, well, now, I didn't say it to a human. And that's the only person, even Dean Rusk, we hadn't discussed those two with them. Yeah. My God, Pearson picked it up two days later. Says Johnson's already made the decision. 
<laughs> Old George just took that egg, swallowed it, carried it right over and put it on. <laughs> and I just laughed and enjoyed it. <laughs> He just can't keep anything, not even bombing Hanoi. <laughs> but I got to work on Russia. I got 